expose the United States Space Force and all their units. They have more than almost 75 units for this uh, Space Force. Let's get to it. All right, Joe, you notice anything strange? We have a pyramid. We have a star at the top. And we have a an Egyptian Egyptian god. We know that the Egyptian gods were fallen angels. We know that stars are angels. We all we see is the uh, we see the Egyptian dude over the earth, meaning dominion. And we see a star that he's looking at, giving reverence to a star. That star is Lucifer. Okay, they put it right in your face. Let's get some more. Here's some more branches. Here's some more logos. Let's see what's interesting. Let's look at the top right, the very top right where we see the uh, the wings at the bottom of this. We see the two X's up there. Hmm. What does all this stuff mean, y'all? What is the one at the bottom left, the far bottom left? We see the beast on top of the earth, which we know the earth is not round. You see the star there. That is Lucifer. Now you see the next one with the fist hitting the earth with the, with the arrow going around. We know what the Bible says in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, that Jesus said he saw Satan fall like lightning to the earth. That lightning represents Lucifer. It means the power structure. You see the iron fist? Look to the right. You see the, uh, the far right at the bottom. You see the stars up there. These are the angels, y'all. They're getting ready for war. That's what Star Wars is about. Battle of the Angels. Battle of the Angels. Let's go to the next one. It's right in your face. Look at the top. You see the owl up there on the left. You see the knight, Knights Templar. You see the, uh, the the eagle again with the stars at the top. You see the horn, the rising of the sun at the bottom. You see the wolf on top. You see the light tower, meaning light bearer, right? Then you see at the bottom, you see another eagle with what? Stars around it. Let's go to the next one. Again, y'all, these are all different branches. What is an octopus with the, with the uh, tentacles around the stars? Stars. You see the top one. That's Lucifer over those stars and the beast. You see the gargoyle on the right, stars up there. You see the guy at the left with the lightning bolt in his hand on top of the earth. We see right here in the middle at the bottom is a pyramid with the lightning bolt with the star under it. I mean, above it. We see on the right, we see a sword going through the earth with a star going through the sword with a sword with stars at the top. We see the wings. The angels are deeply and intimately involved in the space force. They're getting ready for a fight with God. We got another one, y'all. This, um, this is a, this is right in your face. You can't miss it. Pay attention. This is Masonic. This is dealing with symbols. They know what it means. You need to know what they mean. The fallen angels are getting ready to go to war with the elites against God the angels. And as you can see, that. It's Lucifer the serpent with the stars above. Wake up. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashem and Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakha Kwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. I'm learning this church. I don't want to talk about the I'm pushing this church in our sincerity and our honesty. Basically, you saw the video, you know, that, um, that I put before, you know, and it goes to show like literally that the prophecies are true and are real in the scriptures okay now this individual you know is basically speaking about you know these signs man these symbols and how these sim what these symbols represent you know and you heard what you heard what the individual said man you know all those sy symbols represent you know what's going to happen man which is prophecy man okay e man right you know are going to try and fight Yahweh Shai and the angels, you know? they got different um, task force, whatever they want to call it, okay? To fight against the angels and Yahweh Shai, you know? But obviously, we know through the scriptures, through prophecy, that they're not going to win. They're not going to prevail, man. You know, they're going to lose, right? But the thing is, they are going to try and fight Yahweh Shai and the angels, man. Okay? Because... They see themselves as the ultimate power, man. You know, to be so confident, right? To be so arrogant, to be able to 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 to, to put together a task force, right? To try and destroy, <laughs> you know, Yahweh Shai and the angels, man. Try to destroy the heavens. <laughs> then you know the, they have to put themselves on a godlike on a godlike status to do that, man. And at the end of the day, man, you know, Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, they don't really know all of these things are going to come to pass. 
right? Because this is the Most High's movie, right? All things are controlled by the Most High, okay? Because at the end of the day, man, Iman, they want their kingdom to last forever. They don't want their kingdom to fall. So they're going to try, you know, going to try um fight the angels and Yahweh Shai. You know, they're going to try and um, destroy the elect. You know, they're going to try find every means that they can to stop their kingdom from coming to an end, for, from stopping the destruction of their kingdom. But guess what? They're going to fail miserably, man. You know, I'm going to get the scriptures. Um, First one. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get two main scriptures that speaks about this. So I'm gonna get a Revelation twelve. Uh yeah, uh Revelation twelve verses seven. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Okay, now read it again. Verse 7, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought at, and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Okay? And we know when he says Michael here, we know, you know, this representing Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai and his angels, man. Okay? And the dragon, right? We all know that the dragon is talking about Esau Eden, right? They're the dragon, they're the serpent, right? You know, and they're going to try to fight against Yahweh Shai and the angels, you know, what did it say, verse 8, and prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven, right? So they're not going to win, man, you know, they're not going to win. They're not going to win, man. Why Why are they doing this? Because they want their kingdom, you know, to, to last forever. They don't want their kingdom, you know, to, 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 to come to an end, you know, because our kingdom, which is the, the kingdom of the Israelites, Right? Um, we're gonna we're gonna rule, start with the elect, you know. The elect, you know, um are gonna basically rule, right? In the kingdom, man. Which are the Israelites, you know, are gonna be ruled by the Israelites, man. The whole world, all these other planets, everything gonna be are gonna be ruled by you know Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and the elect, you know, that's the order it's gonna be in. But they want their kingdom to last forever. They don't want their kingdom to come to an end. That's the main reason why they're going to try and fight Yahweh Shai and the angels. That's the reason why they're going to try, you know, demonize, you know, the prophets. That's why they're going to come up against the elect, try to destroy the elect, man. And we're going to skip to Revelation 12, verses 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and he that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath. Because he knoweth he hath but a short time. You see? And we again rejoice, therefore, ye heavens and he that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil. Also, we're talking about Esau Edom. The word devil means deceiver. And we know that Esau Edom, the so-called white man, is the biggest, de biggest deceiver, you know, throughout this whole er earth. You know? And he says... um, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because you know what you have but a short time. And his time is coming to an end, man. You know? His time is coming to an end. His kingdom is about to come to an end. Um, I'm going to get um, second as just six. I think it's second edge of six verses nine. That's it. Second edge of six verses nine. It says, For Esau is the end of the world. Which we're in Esau's world right now. We're in Esau's kingdom. We're in Esau's rulership right now. And their kingdom is going to be the end. Because their kingdom is going to come to an end. Right? And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. So when Esau, the so-called white man kingdom, comes to an end, right? Our kingdom, right? The Israel, they're going to come after that. Right? For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. You know, that is why they're going to come down on our people having great wrath. Because they know they have but a short time. They know the time is about to come to an end. So that's why they're, they're trying to do all of these things. Establish, establish their new world order. Trying to put out their, their MOTB. Trying to do all of these things, right? So that they can try, you know, and make their kingdom go on. But it's not going to happen, man. You know, their kingdom is not going to last. Okay, and now I'm going to get 2nd Edges 13, starting from verse 1. 
this is, you know, Ezra's vision, you know, of the war in heaven, you know, when, um, you know, these, the, the beast, you know, are going to try and fight Yahweh Shai and the angels, right? And it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof. You know, and this sea is talking about the sky, man, right? And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. And this, this is talking about Yahweh Shai, you know, and the thousands from, of heaven are talking about the angels, man, right? So Ezra saw Yahweh Shai and the angels in his vision. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. Now, when he says, um, when have the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice. Now, this is talking about, you know, the beams from the chariot, right? And the IBCMs, man, the nuclear missiles, you know, that was, this is basically a war that's happening, man. We're a war tree, man. You know, so talking about the IBCMs and the, the beams from the chariots, man, right? Verses 4. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth it when he feel it the fire. Right? After this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men. Now this multitude is talking about the beasts. Okay? Who those that are gonna try and fight Yahweh Shah and the angels, man? Right? Right? The serpent, man, the dragon, man. Okay? Esau Edom. From the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. Right? So they um so they're gonna be right individuals right the, 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 the beast right is going to try you know from four they're going to come from all the four winds right of the earth man right there's going to be armies from all, all nations man trying to fight esau man so like here there's um armies from all nations trying to fight yahweh shy and the angels man verses six um but I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it, right? Because when we go back to verse 5, it talks about the multitude of men, right? Um, that are going to, you know, um, basically coming from the four winds, you know, basically coming from all over the earth, right, to try and fight Yahweh Shah and the angels. Verse 6, but I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. Now, this mountain is talking about a chariot, man, because Yahweh Shah is chariot. Right, is basically gonna be the biggest, the best chariot there. That's gonna be there. Right? So Ezra Ezra um saw it saw a great mountain, you know, but it's talking about a chariot, man. But I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven and I could not. You know, Ezra couldn't see where the hill was carved from, right? Because it was a chariot, man. You know, it was the Yahweh Shai's chariot. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, and yet there is fight. And lo, he saw the violence of the multitude that came. He neither lifted up his hand, nor el sword, nor any instrument of war. Right? Precept upon, pre precept upon precept, Revelation 17, verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb. Now the Lamb is talking about Yahweh Shai. Right? And obviously, they're going to try and, um, and make war with Yahweh Shai and the angels, man. And the Lamb shall overcome them. You know? So basically, the Yahweh Shai and his angels shall destroy destroy them. They're going to try to fight Yahweh Shai and, you know, and the angels, man. When they make war with them in the skies, man. You know? That's that's these armies, man. That's the beast, you know, trying to, you know, um, destroy the angels and Yahweh Shai. You know, the same thing we're reading about in, in, in Second Edges 13. You know? Um, for he is lords of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful okay so now i can go back to um second edges um second edges 13 verses 10 but only i saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests now this is talking about the beams man you know the beams from the chariots man Right, they're gonna hit and destroy this place, man. You know, that's that's gonna hit and destroy all those armies that's gonna try and fight him, man. 
and they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude, which was prepared to fight, talking about these armies, right? And burned them up, every one, so that upon a sudden number of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Okay, what is it saying in verse 11? They said they're going to be completely and utterly destroyed, man. You know, they're going to be completely and utterly, utterly destroyed. You know? It says, but only dust and smell of smoke was left. They're going to be completely and utterly destroyed. Afterward, saw I the same man came down from the mountain, Yahushai, and called unto him another peaceable multitude. And this is talking about the elect, right? This is talking about the elect. So basically, that's what this individual in the, in the first video was talking about, man. You know, all those symbols, you know, they're basically showing, you know, what's going to come, man. Because we see all, all of these other symbols with the stars in the sky and, you know, a lot of them, like, got the earth. Because right now, right, you know, um, the wicked are in rulership of this earth right now. Okay? So they got the earth in the, in the palm of their hands right now. But Yahweh Bashim al has given it to them. Right? When you go to um, Job 9 verse 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Okay? So they have the, the earth right now. But it's going to be completely and utterly destroyed. Right? right? But first, many prophecies have to come to pass first. Right? And these prophecies are also with these wicked. Right? Um, doing, you know, pushing out all the things that they're going to push out with basically a big part of Jacob's trouble, man. Right? They're going to do all sorts of wickedness. Right? To try and do a lot of wickedness to the elect. You know, they're going to try and demonize the elect. They're going to do, you know, try to do many, many things that are prophesied in the scriptures, man. And talking about, um, you know, pushing out the NWO, you know, with the uh, martial law, concentration camps, you know, all of these things, the famine, you know, um, all of these things that are happening, man, they're the ones that basically putting things into play for these things to come to pass, these prophecies. But Yahweh Hashem is the one that's making all of these things happen, man. You know, so at the end of the day, we have to fear the Most High and pray that the Lord have mercy upon us so we can be of that peace of a multitude, you know, so we, we can be of the elect. Because, hey, man, you know, all those armies that are going to try and fight Yahweh Shai and the angels are going to be ob obliterated, man. This whole kingdom is going to be obliterated, oblig destroyed, completely finished. Okay? Modern day Babylon, which is America, is going to be completely finished. And once Babylon goes down, Esau's whole kingdom is, is going to crumble down with it. You know? So basically, these are the things that these are the things that are bound to happen. Bible prophecy, man. You know, so I'm gonna end it here. Hope it was edifying, you know. Hope, you know, we can learn something. You know, I definitely learned something doing this. So with that, I'm gonna say all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakai Kwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. I'm learning this truth. Until next time, I'm going to say Shalom.